Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, I'm going to be reviewing a couple unique and interesting rackets. They are from the Angel line. I know, some of you haven't heard this before. Um, Angel, not like Angel, right? But the last name of Angel, A N G E. L L and it's named after a person by the name of Paul Angel who from what I've read worked for Dunlop at some point um, coming up with braided graphites uh, back in the 90s 80s 90s um, into the 2000s uh, I guess he was Dunlop's engineer of tennis rackets uh, he came up with Muscle Weave and some of the Slazenger braided rackets. So now he has his own company called Angel uh, Tennis, and it's based in England. Now, he, his company is kind of for custom, customized rackets. You can do and you can order uh, rackets the way you want um, him to make it. So I guess there's a base racket, and he will customize the grip for you, weight it for you, swing weight it for you, uh, to your specs. Uh, from what I've seen, they all are players' rackets. So um, you probably have to be at a certain level or want a cert that certain type of a racket. Uh, you know, you, it's not like a pure drive off the wall. So. Uh, you kind of have to semi know what you're doing and you kind of have to semi know what you want okay so these aren't for the fan at heart okay these are real rackets they're like pro stock rackets all right today though I'm gonna be reviewing these two rackets that he does sell as like stock rackets so one is called the Angel ASL 2 okay and the other is the K7 Lime okay I was lucky enough to get these from a customer customer of ours to borrow them uh, because uh, he and I have always talked about Angel in the last you know let's say year and I was like oh yeah whatever you know when I saw the rackets they look kind of cheap so I was like what you know what's this all about man He's like, oh yeah, no, they're they're good rackets, and and you know the first for the first couple of months I was just blowing it off like this doesn't look very expensive to me. It looks like somebody just tried to produce a you know aluminum racket right with a thin beam. Uh, but you know the more we talked, the more I did research on it, it it, it seems like the real deal. So. So what I'm going to do today is mess around with these rackets a bit. I'm going to show you what I can find out about them because they tout themselves on being very spec specific, right? Like every racket that comes off, especially these that are stock, um, are supposed to be within X amount um, on spec. So maybe actually on spec. Uh, so we're going to test that out today, okay? So a couple highlights about these rackets is that they are made out of high modulus carbon fiber. So high modulus graphite essentially is what it is. And then they strategically put the silicone sil layers in certain strategic parts of the racket, which helps to stabilize the racket. Okay, and the from from everything that I've read, these are all going to be soft rackets. So I know that they're going to be in the 60s. They're flexible rackets, and the thing that they're touting themselves on is that when you play with these, when somebody strikes the ball hard at you, right? that it reduces the impact. It, the racket actually is my, so what I'm guessing is it says if it reduces the impact when the ball strikes, which tells me that this racket's flexible, right? Because it's gonna bend 
right? But the interesting thing is that it's also saying it, it will give you more pace. It'll load more pace into your frame for your shot going back, right? Because usually people say, oh yeah, it's got control, it's flexible. But nobody touts themselves as, you know, promoting the energy transition back. Usually it's feel, it's control. Nobody ever says, oh yeah, you get the control and it bends, and then, but it actually going to create more energy to launch it back. So like a trampoline is what they're touting themselves as. So the whole racket along with the strings, trampolines, right? Because it's absorbing, right? And then causing it to shoot back. Usually you get that effect from the strings. Uh, but they're touting that the, the racket does the same thing. All right? So I'm going to see if it's at suspect. Oh. Let's test out their quality control. So first thing I noticed was the grip has been changed. It is actually a Syntec Pro Babolat grip. Um, there was an overgrip and I took that off already. I took off this all the way to down here, this grip all the way to down here just to make sure it wasn't messed with. Um, there was a little lead here and I removed that. Okay, so there's no more lead on the sides. Okay, um, let me get one more thing. So there is silicone down here. Let me poke it a little bit. Oh, it's cast foam. It's actually cast foam in here. I thought it was silicone because it's gray. That's interesting. So it's filled. Not silicone. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. It looks well made though. I mean, it l the colors look cheap, but it looks well made. See the, the angel writing here, right? That's, that's kind of indented in there. So you can feel it, like they stamped it with Angel on both sides. So that's pretty cool. That's, that tells me that it's um, you know, pretty good quality, I guess, right? So from just feeling around, I can feel that this is thicker. So this is 23 millimeters. And then as you hit here, as the hoop starts, it's 21. So it's 21 around the hoop. But down here on, it's 23. So what that tells me is their concept of energy transfer. So when the ball hits it, it absorbs. Well, the hoop's going to absorb that, right, to a certain degree. And then redirect the energy because it's going to firm up at the throat and then launch the ball right? Transferring energy. So coming back and then transferring energy away, right? That makes sense to me. I have seen like this kind of tapering since like the 80s, you know, since the advent of some of the taper beam wide bodies, you know, from Prince and, and all the other guys. So this is, this is interesting. The more I study this, the more interesting it becomes to me. But let's, let's spec it out and see what we get. First thing I'm going to do, I got my balance board out. Let's see if that grip changes anything because I'm using a Syntec. Okay, so it's about three... Three eighteen. So that's a little off already. Let's hit the scale and see what else we we find out at the scale.
301.5. All right, let's see what the swing weight is. Two eighty six. All right, let's go talk about this. So, before I go into the numbers, I'm just going to tell you the features of the racket. Uh, it's a ninety seven square inch head on a 16 by 19 string pattern, okay? 27 inches long, so pretty standard in tennis rackets. Um, it's got this little egg shaped, I don't know, that's why I keep looking at it, right? No, <laughs> I don't know, just a little, little interesting to me. Um, uh, I don't know what other word I can use that, you know, some of you angel lovers are gonna, gonna you know, not like, okay? So anyways, um, I went, I, I, I'm actually on the Win the Angel site right there for that racket, because I had to double check the specs again, um, because I thought they would be a lot closer. I'm actually gonna show you the specs here, and this is on their site, uh, and it's for the ASL2 okay and these are their specs right there so i just wanted to make sure i wasn't doing the wrong racket but that is indeed the asl2 okay now first of all the weight is already off okay so it's lighter it's lighter right not heavier so there's something off about the racket already okay so and that's pretty significant to me that's 310 301 okay um the balance is pretty off too i mean we can blame the grip maybe but usually those replacement grips aren't that far off so that's pretty far off already too um the swing weight I mean that's that's kind of far off, right? So I I don't know, Angel. Is there something wrong with this particular racket? Cause I mean, was there something supposed to be done to the racket that um, that I don't know about? Um, I'm not sure. Okay, but just from me testing, doing my test on it. These, these aren't up to your specs because it even says unstrung specs there. This is unstrung, right? Unless that's supposed to be strung specs. Um, I don't know. Maybe somebody can answer that for me. All right. So that's just this one. So we're going to string it up and I'm going to go hit with it and then uh, tell you what I think. All right. Hold tight. All right. Next from the angel line i'm going to test out the k7 lime l-i-m-e lime so this racket's a little different in that it's a 98 square inch head on an 1820 okay so i'm going to mess with the weights of this one too and see if they come out to spec now this is a little bit of a different racket it's um aramid in the material along with a carbon fiber matrix is what they call it so it's carbon carbon fiber graphite mixed with aramid okay so the aramid is supposed to be dampening the dampening property in in the mix of the graphite i mean i know aramid from gamma strings which is supposed to be durable like a kevlar so I've never heard of it in a racket before, but since this guy knows rackets and have developed rackets before, I'm guessing he knows what he's doing with the material 
and, and how it's supposed to function and play. So I'm going to cut these strings out and take a look at what's, actually let's just take a look right now. I'm going to cut the strings out in a bit. So I haven't opened this up yet. Is this the original grip? This looks to be the original grip. So, so I don't think this was ever touched because that looks, because that looks brand new and this looks too perfect. So I doubt if um, the owner of this racket has ever opened this up. Yeah, this looks too perfect. That's definitely like a factory. Look at this tape. Look at that. It's just stretchy, stretchy, stretchy. 